training and uh, did training, uh, trained at BDRs and deputized them. And I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, haven't in a while, but uh, the, um, it was a great pleasure to do that. I'm also president of an organization called Women for Good Government. Uh, we meet on a monthly basis with, uh, with uh, speakers uh, who come and teach us about important uh, political, governmental, uh, social action, and nonprofit uh, organization information. So when we're out talking to people about voting or getting involved in their community, we feel a little bit more prepared to talk about it. Uh, the other thing we do is during an election cycle from June until election day, our organization goes and does volunteer work for a particular uh, party and uh, we donate thousands of hours that way doing the behind the scenes work. Sadly, we can't do that this year, but uh, everybody's out there working uh, for this most important election year. But anyway, I'm delighted to be here and um, Thank you very much for inviting me. The reason I want to talk about this is when I was doing BDR training and we were talking about the voter registration card, I often had questions about what those numbers on the card mean. And uh, so I thought at one time that I would try to do this as a preface to a BDR training. Uh, just to quickly explain what those numbers are, but that's what we're doing here today. And if it's useful, uh, we might incorporate that in BDR training or other, other places as well. Okay, so what you're looking at here is my, uh, my own voter registration card. And as you see, uh, it's a current one. It doesn't expire until the end of December 2021. As all, we get new voter registration cards uh, every two years. They all expire in the odd number year in December. So let's take a look at this. In addition to um, telling y'all how old I am, which is fine, I'm proud of being this age. Uh, note, the, note the addresses. The address over on this side is my residence address. The address over here is a US mail address. And it's perfectly fine when you're registering people to vote to have a, both those addresses. The residence address on this side must, you must, that must be on the voter registration application card. If the addresses are the same, you only need to do one. But if they're different, you can put both. But this one over here, why? Why is this address important? because your residence address determines which political entities, which governmental entities that you'll be allowed to vote in, which districts, all these are districts over here. So your residence address determines which districts uh, you'll be able to vote in and for those candidates. Okay, so let's take a look at this card. Here's my precinct number. The precinct is the smallest political entity in the state of Texas. And um, it's a precinct within the county. These precincts are drawn by the county commissioner's court and the size of them is determined uh, by the population. So we'll be doing redistricting in 2021 and some of our precincts will get more people and some will get fewer people and we may have to add precincts depending on how much the population grows. And you can see how many precincts there are within Travis County. Many, many, many. And um, each one of these is also a political entity because the leaders of these little precincts are called precinct chairs and they are actually elected officials uh, of the state of Texas within the county. The county commissioner's court draws these precincts based on the population and so many of them will be redrawn and we'll probably have to add some. So what is the importance of the precinct? Well it used to be before we had vote anywhere, 
uh, we used to have to go to a polling location in our precinct, the, the precinct that's on our voter registration card. And now that we have Vote Anywhere, we don't have to go to that polling location, but it's very handy. It's closer to your house. And uh, sometimes there aren't as many people as you are at your local precinct polling location as they are in the big voting centers. But um, so when we get ready to vote, you can choose the list of voting locations are going to be online through the Travis County Elections Division, and you can find that out early in early voting. These all these multiple precincts are not engaged at that point. They're all engaged on election day. Early voting has fewer places to vote, but they're typically large voting centers. So if you wait till election day to vote, you might want to go to your local polling location close to your residence. All right, so those are our county precincts. Now, how do you find your precinct number if you can't find, if you don't have a voter registration certificate or you have gotten it and you can't find it? So there's a very handy application online and it's called votetravis.com. You can do many things with this. And uh, one thing is to find your precinct. This is what it looks like when you first um, uh, type this into your Google search line, votetravis.com, and it's voter lookup, as you can see, and um, I typed in my name, and I typed in my birthday, and you say, look me up, and this is the information you get. There's my precinct number. That's when I first registered to vote. My goodness, that's a long time ago. That's where I live, and here's my mailing address. Now, closer to election time, closer to early voting, this little square over here will be uh, kind of lit up in red, and it will say, view my ballot. At which point you click on that, it's gonna show you the exact ballot, your customized ballot, customized for you and where you live, it shows who you can vote for, and uh, you can, Look at that, print it out. You can take it with you to the polling location or if you're voting by mail, uh, you can fill it out before you get your ballot and be ready to go. So the other thing that's handy about this closer to the uh, early voting uh, is a list of polling locations near your residence based on this address right here. So it's gonna show you the closest voting centers or uh, precincts, polling locations that will be closest to your residence and also it will show you the wait time for each of those locations. So you can make a choice whether you want to go uh, vote where if the wait is 10 minutes or 20 minutes and so on and so forth. All right, so don't forget about this votetravis.com. It's a very handy thing, uh, very handy application and uh, it'll be there ready and waiting for you to use it. All right. So the other piece of information that you might want to have if you want to get involved in campaigns and working on campaigns or working within your own party uh, is you might want to know who your precinct chair is. So uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this information sheet here, who is my precinct chair? You can Google Democratic Party precinct chairs or Republican Party precinct chairs and or use this if you can, uh, this link and look up the precinct chair for your precinct. Uh, the precinct chair's job, and by the way, anybody can become a precinct chair. Please don't hesitate to volunteer if you would like to do that. Um, they're responsible for working with their constituents within the precinct to do campaigning and strategic work uh, when during an election cycle. So you can look up your precinct chair there. Once you get your number, you can look up your precinct chair. All right, so let's move on then to the next set of numbers, uh, which is in the right-hand corner. Uh, the first number 
is uh, the United States House of Representatives. And I live in District 10. So my House of Representatives, uh, my congressman then, uh, is, uh, represents District 10. And as you all know, uh, and here's the map of our United States congressional districts. Just in Travis County, I've limited this discussion to Travis County because as you all know, the state is so big, it would take quite a while to go through every single one of these base, uh, if we're talking about the state. Within Travis County, we have one, two, three, four, five United States con congressional districts. And as you all know, there's an election in each one of these uh, congressional districts uh, in November. And because U.S. House of Representatives are elected every two years. So if you're interested in knowing about all this, by the way, please, uh, please get a copy uh, online or, or printed of the Legal Women Voter Voter Guide. I'm not sure when it's going to be out, but it's extremely handy. And uh, it will... Uh, the guide itself will talk about every candidate running in each of these congressional districts, the Senate districts, and so on and so forth. Uh, indispensable piece of information, the League of Women Voter Guide. Okay, so those are United States congressional districts. And you can uh, also find out exactly who represents you by typing who represents me uh, in a Google search or on your browser search line, uh, who represents me and they'll ask for your name and address and they'll bring up a list of your congressional uh, district representatives, your state house representatives and your Texas Senate uh, representatives so you know who to call when you want to talk to them about an issue in your area. All right, so our next set of uh, elected officials that represent us is um, our Texas Senate districts. Uh, Texas has a Senate and a, and a House of Representatives, as does the federal government. And uh, within Travis County, these are our senatorial districts. There are one, two, three, four. As you all know, this is uh, Texas Senate District 14. As you all know, we had a special election in July to replace the Texas Senator because the incumbent stepped down to take another job outside of Travis County. And so the governor had to order a special election to replace uh, the, um, that, that particular senator, which was, who was Kirk Watson, by the way. So in July, a new Texas senator from District 14 was elected. And that person will uh, serve out that term for that particular Senate uh, space, and then eventually there'll be another election for that Senate seat. So these are Texas Senate seats. And, um, excuse me, each Senate district, each Senate district in the state has about 800,000 people. These boundaries are drawn by the state legislature and are based on population. So each one of these districts is supposed to have about the same number of people. In 2021, there'll be another redistricting because the population will have increased. And the Texas legislature will take on that task unless they appoint a special, uh, a special nonpartisan committee to do the redistricting. All right, so those are our Senate districts within Travis County. The other legislative districts we have in the state are our House district. And the people who are elected to represent us in our House district are called representatives, just like the federal government. And within uh, these 
these representatives are elected every two years. And um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six elected officials who represent us in Travis County based on their district. And uh, they serve us in the Texas House and uh, they represent uh, about, um, I'm trying to remember the number of people in each one of these. I think I forgot to write it down, but um, it's several hundred thousand people for each of these state house districts for our house of representatives. And we are asked to, uh, they are elected every two years. So there will be people who are incumbents. There are people who are incumbents who are elected to represent these districts currently serving us, but they will be on the ballot in November because we uh, elect them or reelect them every two years. All right, so um, let's move on. That's our, these are the state, the Texas Senate was before, these are the Texas House. Our next set of elected officials or districts is our Travis County Commissioner precincts. The county commissioner uh, court is is a facsimile or very akin to uh, a city's uh, managing body, elected managing body. So these district one, two, three, and four, there's four commissioners. They are elected by their constituents. These uh, districts are drawn by the county commissioner's court. And the leader or the head of this, the elected official that is akin to the mayor is the county judge. And as you all know, we recently had an election to replace the county judge for Travis County because the judge stepped down in May and became uh, the senator for Texas Senate District 14. Right now, there's an interim person serving, uh, but the candidates, uh, there'll be candidates uh, in the Republican and Democratic Party who will be on the ballot, one each, in November to elect the new judge. Uh, these other people, uh, these commissioners, uh, will not be on the ballot this year, I do not think, um, pretty sure. So um, I think they're elected every two years as well. I could be wrong about that. But anyway, so there will be the county judge who's akin to a city mayor on the ballot in November. Okay, so the county commissioner is the governing body of the county and they have many responsibilities because they oversee the sheriff's department, they oversee the Travis County Elections Division, they oversee the Travis County Voter Registrar's Office, the tax office, uh, I already mentioned the chairs, all the justices of the peace, the county JPs, the county judges, and so on and so forth. So a lot of responsibility and um, a big county with lots of people in it. So take an interest in who your county commissioner is and don't hesitate to call them if you want to. All right, so let's move on now to a smaller entity, uh, which is the um, Justice of the Peace Precincts. Uh, and under the JPs are also the constables who are also elected officials. But within Travis County, uh, we have a five JP precincts, Justice of the Peace Precincts. They serve under the uh, county judge of Travis County and they are elected. Um, I'm sorry, I do not know if we have any JPs on the ballot for November. I, it will be in the League of Women Voter Guide though. So these people are responsible for many, many different things. And um, one of them is uh, working with the constables who are 
uh, much like uh, law enforcement folks, but have many other responsibilities besides that. If you want to get married, you can go see one of these G JPs in any one of these districts, and that's one of the things they do, and that's one of the things they love to do. All right, so then after our JPs, uh, we have, um, excuse me, after our JPs, we have the uh, school, excuse me, the independent school district single, mem single member district maps. And as you all know, we elect people to uh, represent us in the school district and there are these there are these independent single districts uh, within the Austin Independent School District system. And we elect these people every two years or so. And there are people running uh, right now for uh, City of Austin uh, School District. And they serve and work with the superintendent of schools. Um, and are not, they do not report to the city or to the county. They are a independently functioning district and districts within Travis County. And specifically, this is Austin and it's not Pflugerville School District and Lake Travis School District. This is pe peculiar to Austin only, and, but that's what's on my voter registration card. If you live outside of Austin, uh, your voter registration card will have the name of the school district uh, within your municipality, like Lake Travis School District and Pflugerville and Maynard. You know, even though they're in Travis County, they have their own school district, and that's what will be displayed on your voter registration card. Now, um, and mine is three. So my school district representative is from this area right here. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next number, which is the State Board of Education. We don't hear a lot about the State Board of Education in terms of it being uh, a hot topic in our elections, but this is a very, very important organization committee and uh, functions within the state of Texas and under the state auspices. And if you'll notice here, number five and number 10, those are the two districts within Travis County. So on the ballots in November, we're gonna have people running in district five and district 10. My district is five. So I will be voting for whoever my favorite candidate is in this district and you all uh, who live in District 10, but that will be on your card. This is an important elected office. And um, so the State Board of Education controls a lot of stuff, a lot of very important decisions that are made in the state about the educational system in our state. So uh, check out the League of Women Voters guide and see who's running for these two State Board of Education races that we in Travis County can vote for. All right, then last but not least is our City Council. As you all know, uh, we are a, we have, uh, it's a 10-1 setup. So there's a mayor and uh, 10 uh, districts, 10 separate districts with 10 council members. Didn't used to be this way. I'm sure uh, many of you who've lived in Austin a long time uh, remember that most of our city council members were elected at large, but uh, several years ago, the city approved we, the voters, approved a 10-1 model. So now we have 10 districts and 10 different people running to represent each of those districts. My district uh, is number nine, which is this one right here. Uh, there are people running 
uh, in November uh, and will be on your ballot running to represent one of these districts. They don't all 10 run at the same time. Some of them run one election cycle and some of them will run uh, in another election cycle. Uh, I think they're thinking about changing that, but uh, I haven't heard anything definite. So check out the league, uh, the league's voter guide to see who, uh, if your if your precinct, uh, if you are in a city of Austin city council district that's where the uh, incumbent is running, I know there there are many people running up in seven and six, and uh, and and then and I think this is ten. I can't see it, but it is. So um, that's the end of the numbers. And I just want to point out one other thing on this voter registration card. If you're looking at mine, <clears throat> this code right here, A U S F P. This one over here tells me that I'm in the city of Austin school district. Yes. That this little funky little code right there means that my residence is fully inside the city of Austin. That, <coughs> pardon me. That means Austin full purpose. Many of us who live in Travis County in a different municipality that is not Austin, like Lakeway, Pflugerville, Maynard will have a different uh, code here. And some of us who actually are in the city, but not in the full purpose, will have something that looks like ETJ. <coughs> Pardon me. So, uh, that's it for the voter registration card. If you have any questions, I'm not sure if we're taking questions today, but I'm happy to answer some. Thank you so much for your time, Mary. If anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A function or in the chat. I am monitoring both of those. Um, and thank you again, Mary, for your time. Oh, you're so very welcome. Uh, I certainly hope that was helpful to everybody. And um, it was helpful to me to review uh, the meanings of all these things, actually. So thank you very much for inviting me. And um, I will stay on to see what else is going on. And if anyone has any questions after the chat, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook um, or email us and we'll get back to you as well. Oh, I do have some questions. Oh, actually, I do not. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. And again, thank you, Miss Mary Patrick. You bet. And uh, I'll see you at the next class. Thank you. All right. Are we, is it over? It is. Oh, okay. Thank you.